Good evening. Today is the 25th of August, about 8.38 uh, p.m. here in New York. Let's do our day six. Sorry about that. I think I muted myself uh, by mistake. All right, so why don't we get started? Um, today, as I promise you, today we'll be starting with uh, the REST services. Um, as you can see in a few minutes, um, after knowing the XML-based uh, SOAP uh, um, web services, learning REST services is uh, literally a breeze because there's not uh, much that you will be doing differently from what we have done, um, apart from some uh, few things that uh, I will basically going to be highlighting. All right, so let's um, get started first and see what we're going to be doing. So um, I have hosted a new REST service. I'm going to take you to that REST service. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about it. And um, and we'll see uh, how we're going to be testing it. Okay. Um, basically, we are going to be starting with this uh, simple web service today. And uh, as we progress in time, we're going to make it a little bit uh, more complex. Uh, so. As you know, every company has um, employees, all right? So uh, we can all relate to um, being an employee or an employer. Uh, we know how things work, all right? Okay, so uh, there is a REST web service uh, for the employees that we have to be testing. So to begin with, what is a REST service? How do we go about testing a REST service? All right, so we will go back to our uh, day one wherein we talked about um, web services so how is a rest service different from a web uh, service so basically what um, happens here is it's all about the way your uh, service is architected um, so the architecture is going to be different in here so i'm going to be um, taking you over here to um, basically draw a picture and then show it to you as how things are going to be different. Okay, so there is going to be a server and on the server will be these REST services deployed. All right, so if I go in here and if I make believe that this is our server, um, on this server we'll have uh, We'll have, we'll have your REST services deployed. Now, what is a REST service? It's nothing but it is it is based on, oh, I just got to make sure that this, this thing works because I move my pen and then it would not work. And I get a little bit irritated with things. Um, I mean, there is nothing like a perfection when it comes to computers. I mean, you know, these things uh, you just cannot rely. Like uh, you open a faucet, you almost 99.99% of the time you expect um, water to come out. You flip the switch, you the light bulb glows. When it comes to computers, I mean, you 
cannot, you cannot be sure if things would work or not. I mean, this is a, um, a state-of-the-art machine. It's almost $3,000 I have spent on this machine. And occasionally, it gets, um, it gets frozen, right? It freezes on me. So uh, my uh, sketch pad sort of uh, got frozen here. So give me a second here. Let me just get out of here and open it again. Okay. So what we're talking about these REST services are, um, these are services uh, that are going to be deployed on uh, the server. So this is nothing but some code, right? Uh, some developers have written this code. And the, the, the way it is going to be different from uh, uh, the XML-based web service is, in case of an XML-based web service, the input has to be XML and the output was also sent as XML. So they were totally XML based. And um, the architecture or the protocol was such that uh, we had to uh, follow something called the SOAP envelopes, meaning that uh, your, your payload or your data has to be encapsulated inside an envelope, right? So. Um, that's basically the architecture of an XML based web services. In case of a REST service, uh, you don't have to go through all that uh, uh, messy stuff of uh, packaging something into a, packaging your payload into an envelope and the server doesn't have to bog down by, um, you know, opening each and every envelope. I mean, when it comes to um, a, a high traffic, a high traffic server, right? Now, uh, you have visitors coming in, you have visitors coming in all the time. When you have visitors coming in all the time through this port, port number 80, um, who has to do some job? You have to have your app server, which is basically your web server, like um, we talked about it, like Tomcat or IIS uh, or Apache, or WebSphere, one of uh, those, WebLogic, right? Um, there are many out there. So one of those uh, will be basically be uh, responsible uh, because you could have only one uh, web server. And according to your architecture, um, that web server will be opening these envelopes. So it is responsible for opening the envelope and reading the payload that is in there. So opening of the envelope and reading the payload requires you to parse the XML. And while it is parsing the XML, there are some rules and regulations it has to uh, follow to check the well-formedness, right? Whether the XML is well-formed or not. So uh, what uh, dictates the well-formedness of XML? There are rules uh, that uh, we have to follow meaning that when you are sending the data, um, the data, uh, if that data is, let's say, uh, the data itself, because the data will be in, uh, will be enclosed into this angle brackets, right? So you have, let's say you are sending something um, on this is um, SSN, and this is going to be the value of the SSN, right? End of SSN. Mm. Now, what if, we know that this is SSN and that's the value. So let's say there is some uh, something in here, password, right? This is the password. And the password, somebody uses a password, um, uh, hello, uh, less than, greater than, exclamation, percent. I mean, people can have passwords like that. So uh, this is end of password, right? So once you hit this, once you hit this, um, now it's going to throw off everything because because it it thinks that this is another XML uh, you know um, tag or a, uh, another node of XML. So you you have to it'll it'll bog down it'll it'll fail it'll uh, uh, send what is called a soap fall. So because everything is um, encapsulated into these kind of like elements wherein you know you have these things so your server has to parse it has to open every node and read what is the data and got to make sure so 
all that. So when it is okay, I mean, it is okay if you have like low traffic, like one or two or three or four. But if it is a Thanksgiving and you have like a, uh, or a Christmas or a Valentine's or like, you know, take any holiday like that, wherein you are, you are Amazon.com, you're eBay.com, you are, uh, you know, some retail, huge uh, business in retail and you have lots of orders coming in and every time it has to open this and then while opening it, it, you know, it's doing some work. So as it is doing more and more work and it tends to become, you know, slower and slower and slower. So what they uh, decided is uh, uh, we can be getting traffic, not necessarily from just the computers. We could be getting it from uh, tablets. We could be getting it from phones. We could be getting, so uh, this, this architecture, which is about putting everything into an envelope and somebody had got to open the envelope and parse that, that, that's, that was not working. That was not working um, actually starting from 2009 anything before 2009 things were fine uh, the reason it got bogged down into 2009 is because uh, of um, you know mobile devices uh, popping up um, in the year 2009 iphone apple came out with iphone and then everybody started mimicking them and then uh, once they came out with iphone there were a lot of apps on it and people start started to explore it and uh, so uh, the end result is uh, your server started getting more and more traffic because the traffic now uh, was coming from multiple devices, not necessarily just the computers, but the, from the tablets, from the from your mobile phones, and uh, uh, now with this uh, wearable gadgets, um, you know, uh, I mean, uh, I don't know to what extent um, Apple um, is enjoying the success of um, uh, the watch, I, uh, you know, Apple Watch, uh, but um, anything uh, in its uh, in fancy stage. Uh, Mm, we'll see some uh, resistance, um, but once you know, things starts to pick up, uh, maybe people will find more reasons to buy uh, that iWatch because uh, they were not able to, at least uh, to me, uh, they did not convince uh, me to buy that iWatch. I mean, it's a, it's a status symbol. Uh, I mean, I want people to uh, look at me if I'm wearing that because it's like a $400, $500 uh, gadget, uh, which God knows what it is doing. But um, if tomorrow, if they find a real genuine use for it, um, let's say, uh, you know, uh, if, it, if it is doing some medical uh, purpose uh, that anybody who is a diabetic or anybody who has a heart condition, um, you know, it let's say dials automatically because your heartbeat starts to go up or go down your pressure goes down so it dials 911 for you or it takes you dials your doctor or dull, i mean it, it does things like that and now you see a need for it so today there's not much need for it so um that is a wearable device but it's not like um you know enjoying uh so uh, we are not getting that many hits uh, from those wrist watches right yet but someday we might get it. So that's like one extra device. So you have to design your your architecture uh, in such a way. Uh, you have to design or you have to architect your systems in such a way that uh, um, it's not just um, adding more and more of the hardware. Your software must be designed so that it can be um, uh, providing you with optimum performance. So this XML-based um, web services was not the answer to it um, because um, you know of the reasons I gave you. So they started to look at something else, and what they found is REST, uh, which, believe it or not, uh, was around since 1997, but was not being used because uh, this guy XML-based web services were extremely popular because it was doing everything. But when in 2009, when they find that this is not uh, helpful, they started to look back at REST services. So what are REST services? These are, again, web services, but they, they are very lightweight, meaning that they don't have to go through uh, all those hassles of like, uh, um, you know, uh, opening, closing of the envelopes, this and that, because the uh, everything uh, rotates around what is called a resource. So uh, there were... Uh, service oriented architecture right service oriented architecture and resource oriented architecture so in a service oriented architecture um, you have that that 
that soap and uh, based on your payload your payload has to be open and here in a resource uh, oriented architecture what they were saying is whatever you need to do um, just just create that create a code for that resource right okay now what do you mean by create the code for a resource meaning that let's say um, you take any entity in a business what do you have in a business every business has uh, employees every business has customers um, majority of the business they have um, uh, let's say uh, what's my call like uh, in the billing uh, they have uh, invoicing right so these are entities so let's take customer as an entity right or employee as an entity um, and uh, invoice as an entity so these any of these these resources of a business was translated into software code by 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 offering for this particular resource offering some methods right so what a method method is some work that you can do so we can do some work when it comes to invoices what can we do we can we can um, you know uh, get all invoices meaning that if all invoices uh, if there are some invoices for the month of uh, January we want to see all those invoices so get all invoices right now we can create invoices right we can search for invoices we can uh, settle invoices so the the idea here is for a resource for a resource you can program that resource to to do anything right okay so and that resource that resource can be can be handled can be interacted can be reached as long as that resource has an internet address so there are a couple of things in in rest services that that you need to pay attention one is the resource itself right and what kind of what kind of methods that that resource will offer right and thirdly that resource can be identified with a uri uniform uh, resource uh, identifier which is nothing but an address so as long as you can have some address uh, a web address um, of any entity of any resource that resource can be considered as a REST service. So what does a REST service do? Like any other service, um, the idea here is like any other service, REST service is, the architecture is going to be slightly different, but it is going to, again, take some input, give you some output. So here is my REST service sitting, sitting on a server. And if you need to call this REST service, this REST service will be based on a resource. Um, it can be, uh, let's say, a uh, car, right? So what can you do to a car, depending on that business? What car business now? You could be a mechanic, right? Or you could be a sales uh, company, right? You could be a repair company. You could be like... Uh, so depending on that resource you could do things to that resource right usually you have to you have to uh, try and see that these are the operations that you can perform on that resource what are these operations um, you could you could create a new car right you could read back the information about that car you could update that car and you could delete that car right so these are the things you could do anything you want to do to that car or for that matter to that resource you just remember this crude operation right now in order to in order to interact with that resource you have to be using this protocol http protocol right meaning that http protocol means that it goes over the web so you it will have an address it will have an address so address of what address of that of that resource at the address of the resource so employee can be a resource right so if i am dealing with that if i have to test the 
web service, the REST service for the employee. I will have an address something like this, HTTP, uh, www.trainingright.net or whatever the domain name, right? Forward slash. Um, usually, depending on how you build it, uh, just so that people understand, it's going to be an API. Uh, and you don't just put that API right there. You probably would put it into some folder, some folder API. And then um, whatever that resource is going to be. So let's say if it is a car. So if you if you do cars, it is going to it is going to do what? It is internally it will be there is some routing that is happening, right? There is some routing that is happening. So uh, you can build some methods, right? You can build some functions. Those functions basically uh, will be doing a work like let's say. Uh, get all cars right okay so get all cars as you see the word get get all cars so since this method of this of this resource since the method of that resource is going to be performing something that performing something depends on depends on these verbs right there are four things again there is something called get, right? There's something called put. There's something called delete, right? Now, uh, your, your get is going to be acting as a select, right? Or acting more like a read. So the HTTP verb get is going to return you something. Right, put is going to update something. Is going to update something. Right now, delete of course is going to delete. Right, and then there is something going to be called post. So if you are using any one of these, try and understand. You got to be there, and there are some more, but the the four verbs, HTTP verbs are more than enough for you to understand REST services uh, because you will be given some documentation to test these REST services. And the way you're going to be test, uh, testing these re uh, REST services using the uh, tool, the SOAP UI Pro or the Ready API is you have to have an understanding of which which HTTP verb you have to be using and, and performing what. So usually, if you are deleting something, then you will be using the delete uh, HTTP work. If you are updating something, if it is about the updating of, there will be something like, uh, um, let's say here, um, uh, it's not going to be as obvious as update car, right? Uh, it, it, I mean, they might they might not use the word update or they might use the word update. It's totally up to them. But whatever this is, right? It, let's say um, what what should I use other than update to uh, give you an example of of update? So let's say modify, modify car. Modify car, right, is the name of the function that they are they are giving. But internally, how do you modify a car? Let's say before it was manual car, and now you are making it uh, auto automatic car. Right. I mean, that's that's not basically a modification. The modification can be uh, before there was no air conditioning. Now you have air conditioning. So that is some modification. So uh, let's say before color, before it was red color. Now it is blue color. Right. So that's some modification. So if you are doing that, what verb will you be using from here? So sometimes you have to use, you know, um, your brain in terms of. Um, if that is about changing something, so I cannot be using uh, get. Uh, I'm not deleting anything, so it's for this particular modify cars. It's not about that. Can I use post? Post is for anything new, which is basically for insert. So I should not be using. So I should be using a put word, right? Okay. So uh, just keep these things in mind. Now. Uh, having some little vague idea of of 
these words, let us uh, talk about testing a REST service. Okay, in order to test a REST service, what documentation will you be given? So. Uh,